Bryce, I would post it, but I would just be worried about the fallback from the human rights, you know, groups. But go for it. I mean, if a human was involved, I would care about human rights. What about human lefts? True. <laughs> and what about the human lefts? Mm, no one's talking thank about that. Thank you. <laughs> Happy Monday, everybody. Yo. Yeah. 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 It's Monday, Monday. End of the song. That's how people <laughs> get back to work. About it. Get back to work. <laughs> Your break is over. That had to be a parody, right? Back when that was hot. Monday. Somebody did the Monday song. I guess so. I, I guess you would be worried about it being too similar to Manic Monday. <laughs> there. <laughs> There certainly was a thing where, and I don't know if we do it quite the way we used to, but where we could totally exhaust a meme. Mm. Oh, yeah. And we would just, everybody, everything would come out like, well, I'm going to do Friday. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do yeah. that. And you just expected. No. You want to know what, you want to know what, what was that? Was the uh, 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 S word girls say. Oh, yeah. Meme. I bought that everybody book. Everybody did their version s word gamers say s word mm -hmm. blank people say that was or the was blank people did did that start with girls or I, th I thought it started with the twitter account s my dad says no Ooh. girls was way before that no i think s my I, dad says became that tv show but that was I think, way later yeah i yeah i think i think we're we're we're, we're in the same neighborhood but I, I think you might be right that s my dad says was a thing, but that video really sent it to the next level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I bought their book. They made a book very was quickly. It, was, yo, yeah. Uh, it's just a little coffee table book little, of yeah. some S word that girls say. Ah. <laughs> accessories. That's my, that's my favorite. You know. They say, ah. <laughs> shut up, dad. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's, that's my experience. We all know that classic yeah. phrase. Mm -hmm. ah, 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 I'm a girl. <laughs> but, there, but there really was that, like, oh, I love this guy, this caveman commercial. <laughs> oh, we got to have enough of it because there's not going to be more memes and things we're going to like. So let's make this into a, more commercials, a TV show, yeah, let's and make, everything else. Let's make 100 episodes of this idea specifically. It, it, memes were like our... Like what we thought about the oil, the the amount of oil that was left in the ground. Yeah, constantly we're assuming like, ah, that we were at peak, peak oil. Meme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got to got to make the most of this, guys. Got to make most of this meme and put it everywhere. Uh, and now we're like, hey, real quick, Andrew. Uh, just as a heads up, uh, Bonnie is out of town, so um, I'm on uh, kid duty. So I'm I'm gonna peace out at like two forty five ish. About an hour from now. Okay. Oh, uh, about an hour. Okay. About an hour. All right. Cool. Uh, great. Anything so else? Alarm. Uh, I believe I'm ready to go. You guys ready to go? Ready to rock. Andrew, you good? I'm fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm free until like two my time. So it's not uh, so about two hours from, from now. Okay. Good to know. <clears throat> all set. I'm all set. I'm going to count you in then. Uh, we'll start weird things in three, two, Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Mr. Brian Brushwood. Ahoy, mateys. Justin Robert Young. Permission to come aboard, sir. Yes, Permission granted. denied. Oh, oh. Denied. Yeah, but not denied. denied. I'm getting mixed but, messages here, guys. Yeah. I'm only, Just, I'm, don't I'm worry, putting, he says this all the time. I'm He's always one like foot this. On right. board. Really right. nervous about people on right. his Right, come over here. Yeah, Brian, okay, Brian, well, I'm, Brian. I'm sorry, Andrew. Okay. I, I don't mean to usurp your authority. I was just, I was All trying right. to be friendly. And I mean, let me, let me, right now, you and I are like the two funniest guys on this boat. Yes, yes. What's going to happen? We let him on board. Well, we will finally get to enjoy what all of our uh, uh, crew gets to enjoy, which is somebody funnier than themselves. Yeah, but that dynamic just changes. Yeah. And I got this material. I got these jokes. And you know how if I write something down in advance and I read it out, how that's really the best way to do comedy? Okay, listen, I think I have a solution that will satisfy all of us. Let's just deed the boat over to Justin. Oh, let me, let's get Bryce. Where's Bryce? Okay, Bryce, oh, hey, Bryce, Bryce I mean, what's, 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 One second, Justin. Uh, We're just, just bring I'm, you I'm waiting Hold here. On, I'm just, waiting just here now. I mean, I just. That's, have I got permission to come aboard great. the ship? Of Bryce, course you do. You're already You're charming, right. and okay. we are a little dun, bit dun, 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 worried dun, dun, that your charm dun, 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 might dun, dun, 
detract what an from insult. us. Like, how are you gonna? Did they just spit in your face? Like, what? They, spit, they let me on the face. boat, so I, I don't know. Sorry, what you're, you're, you're not come aboard, so they can spit me, in your face. You're not face. technically they aboard that yet. Far. I, I can't hear you. I'm up on the. I'm on the poop deck. I can't hear. Okay, I'm sorry, Bryce. You don't use it for that, Bryce. We keep telling you. More like, more like the spit face. Yeah, no, Bryce, like, we're, we know your charm and like ability is a threat to us, but it kind of enhances us, so we don't really feel in competition. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know what? I'm okay with that as long as I get to be on the boat. Okay. All right, how they about, call me on the boat, Bryce. Justin gets to come on board, but he can only make like 90s jokes. What's Ooh. the deal with boats? Okay. Damn it. That's perfect. Damn it. Can, can, can he hear us? Like, 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 are, are we just having this conversation right on the deck, like five feet away from him? Talk well, about it's a, it's a small B. boat, Brian. Okay. You know, we, okay. we pretend to not see yeah, here a lot. I mean, like, it's okay, not a look. big boat. Guys. All right. Uh, it's, it's just a skiff, really. Yeah. He's up. The moment we feel threatened, we throw him overboard, right? Okay. Yeah. Right. Done. Okay. Done. Right. Done. Welcome and aboard. Good work. Now, now. We throw him over now? No, Do we throw no, him over no, now? No, no, no. no. What do you oh, say oh. we spend <laughs> our time, our maritime time together, uh, 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 talking about things of the weird? <laughs> I got something for you. Yeah. Uh, oh. Probably not, not very weird, but speaking mm. of ships and vessels and things that are supposed to go on voyages, last week was going to be a big test for the sls rocket this is the 30 billion dollar rocket oh. system we spent the last decade plus building yes this is a and heartbreaker delay after delay but finally they got the rusty looking thing that looks like it's been pulled out of a warehouse from 50 years ago onto the launch pad oh and well, basically that's what it, i mean the, you yes know, it, they put them on the launch i mean that's exactly where it needs to go i mean yeah you put your drunk uncle into a car that's great so uh a passenger the, seat the, hopefully meh. so the problem so they put this thing out there in a wet dress rehearsal what they do is this rocket's got uh using the the latest state-of-the-art knowledge about we know about how to keep systems simple it's got two solid rocket boosters again you know thing that exploded on the space shuttle and it's got hydrogen and oxygen uh hot hydrogen's a fuel oxygen's a liquidizer and so the goal with the the wet dress is to fill those tanks and run everything up to 10 seconds before launch. Like everything you would do, filling, get everything ready, all the systems ready to go up until 10 seconds before launch with the idea that if that works, then a few months later, we actually launch this. So... Sounds like it went well and we've now got a rocket in space. We did it! We never stopped dreaming. For he's, he's a jolly, jolly good fellow. For he's guys, a jolly guys, good guys, fella. guys, 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 guys. I, I oh, don't think uh, Brian, Andrew yes. was finished with his story yet. Oh, okay. oh. Yeah. Sorry. So the good news. Go. Good news. It, it didn't blow up. Slack. It didn't, it didn't it did. explode. <laughs> didn't explode. Oh, love uh, it. Now I'll join yeah. in. For he's a jolly good fellow. Oh, maybe, oh, maybe there's more. He maybe had something more. else. Okay, yes. all, right. all right. So they're able to get the liquid oxygen, like most of that in there. Uh -huh. uh, but then they had they had they had a valve problem. They had like a cooling problem. They had a valve problem. They had several sensor problems. So they were never actually able to get like more than five percent of the liquid hydrogen into the rocket. And I don't think that's enough this, to go to me, into space. Not maybe in our space, yes. okay. but it's not. And also liquid hydrogen is really difficult to deal with. There is a reason why SpaceX and Blue Origin and the other new rocket companies do not use liquid hydrogen because of how challenging and difficult it is to store, to move. Hydrogen loves to slip through things, seep out of stuff. Mm. And it is, we, we have a history of using it because it is a great propellant, but it's just really difficult to sort of deal with. And that's why the newer space companies don't do it. So this means they basically, they had to scrub the full uh, wet rehearsal, wet dry re wet rehearsal. And so pull it, they're pulling it back. They're going to pull it back into the assembly building and they're going to wow. inspect everything to it. And they, we don't know when it's going to, they're going to try to test it again when they're going to try to launch, you know, some people optimistically, well, maybe we'll just combine the wet dress rehearsal with a launch. launch? Wait, oh, what? Wait. You can't do that. That's not, Isn't that not the point? Let's do a rehearsal, yeah. but there'll be a full audience waiting behind the curtain. <laughs> and then once we feel yeah. great, we'll just yeah. open up those curtains. We'll record the rehearsal. It'll right. be great. <laughs> let, me, let me ask this question. <laughs> when is Artemis supposed to happen? When is this mission supposed to happen? Uh, 
I, you know, 2016 by, I think, the, uh, the, <laughs> uh, if we're going back to the original, I think it was supposed to happen six years ago. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but, but, but as of, as of now, February, oh, no, sorry. It, 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 oh, it, it, it had been February of this year. Oof. Okay. So we are on borrowed time already. Like, like this is, uh, uh waiting. So, yeah, where are we <laughs> on the road map? theoretically with SLS just not being the so rocket and and maybe maybe if i can speak emotionally uh i i'm really conflicted because part of me says well sillies uh put all your money in the thing that is definitely seems to be working spacex or any of the competitors out there in the private space uh but also i love competition so maybe keep on doing your wacky wet scrubbing non-launching well, thing i the the, the challenge <laughs> comes in and again <laughs> artemis <Non> launch, <laughs> the, the artemis program started in 2017 but it was sort of resurrected parts of earlier stuff so that this version of this goes way back here's the challenge and uh if you look at how much we've spent on this versus if we were doing things like saying, hey, we'll pay $3 billion. We, what we did, the, one of the greatest things that happened with the space industry was basically just saying, here's, here's, give us your best price you know, to tell us to deliver everything, and then we will pay you that. And then you have to deliver it. Anything over is your responsibility. Yeah. Uh, which you saw SpaceX astronauts going. We just had a first four private astronauts go last week. The first private, totally private mission to the International Space Station took place last week. Uh, via Axiom, and kind of like people didn't really notice because that's such, and we're so used to people going on board the Crew Dragon capsules. Meanwhile, the Boeing Starliner, that's not, that's which is old space doing it, not so good. So I would say that I would be all for, like, I think we need to have, we don't, we can't just rely on SpaceX as big of a fan as I am. Sure, we sure. We need other companies. Uh, I, mean, I, I think that, that that has been the position of this show, and it will continue to be. Also, will there ever be a moment in which SLS isn't the primary rocket uh, uh, to take Artemis up, or or is that well, is that just that's that's the way it goes? There's no replacement. Like this will the, take as long as SLS takes. The cost the cost is becoming more apparent because they actually tried to get like what are the costs of it, and there's been a lot of hey, you know, it's a program and stuff, and we're looking at somewhere between like a billion to two billion dollars per launch. It's excessive. That's huge. That is huge. a phenomenally large num amount of money for a program that was supposed to be way cheaper than launching the space shuttle. And if SpaceX Starship wildcard, we'll see. But also Blue Origin has their, uh, they're building their new Glenn, the new Glenn rocket, which is going to be highly capable. And these other systems and people are like, oh, but the, the payload orbit this thing can do is huge. I'm like, yeah, but you can also break up your payloads into smaller amounts. And But some of these newer rockets coming online, we may see... You know, Starship, it's it's the bet Starship now is going to reach orbit before SLS. Yeah. Think about that. I mean, the, for how long this actual rocket's been in development, a fully reusable, you know, craft will be there. So mm. uh, there's some, you know, it's hard because I've always argued, like, you don't want to bet on a thing that doesn't exist. But right now, SLS doesn't exist, and it's this money pit, and... 10% of it, $3 billion, could have funded a lot of research. I, mean, I, 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 I will bet on on a flying taco that comes out of SpaceX before I bet on on SLS. And there's literally a flying taco Brian's on Brian's really t-shirt that he is pointing. Done. Uh, uh, there at... are no coincidences. <laughs> no. Uh, well, so at a philosophical level, I, 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 in general, I understand the importance of a hedge, even a very expensive hedge against any uh, uh one you know uh, uh, unipolar solution to things um i don't know i find myself conflicted like even as much of oh. dare i say a disaster as as sls appears to have been like i, I think i want to keep cheering for it but but i don't have clarity on what i'm cheering for let me give you an alternative let me give you an alternative yes we should have a hedge maybe even a government as much as I hate to say these words, but maybe even one that's a design, whatever, that's controlled by the government in theory, whatever. Although SLS was literally a program written to appease developers who owned key technologies. Other people couldn't compete on boosters and stuff. It was right. not a fair. It was really 
the worst kind of government contract you can imagine. The, but we'll uh, forget the, about the, that. The uh, so-called uh, crony capitalism of, of Boeing and uh, uh, Yeah, Lockheed it was, Martin we or... need a thing that only this factory that you have can produce. And we need a thing that only this, ah, it's open, it's fair. Like, no, it's not. Uh, I'm all for sunk cost fallacy is a very dangerous premise. And is what, what is, it is what's destroyed many businesses. It is what, if you look at, as we argue about how much more money we need to tax people, whatever, you have to ask it's like, take a look at government programs, like a really, really deep look at how we're spending our money and ask yourself, is it 90% efficient, 80% efficient, 30% efficient? And sunk cost fallacy becomes a big part of that. And here I'm like, we, the people go, we spent 30 billion. We got I'm like, I don't, I think we spent 30 billion on a really bad system. I'm arguing it's like we, bad system. It's going to cost us more to launch. We should, it clearly can't do the thing it was supposed to do. So we should scrap it entirely and start over. I mean, uh. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah, look, uh, 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 let's let's just let them chalk this one up to an L and then we'll give them, you know, five or six more opportunities and uh, uh, down the road on different projects. But at least then they'd be competing with fully functioning uh, rockets from multiple different companies. Oh, I mean, I think that that's mm. the thing is that people forget that this project was started at a a far like a night and day different time in space exploration i mean th this was greenlit when spacex was was nascent comparably to now where it is a reliable uh contractor for the federal government yeah hmm. yeah so the artemis program that came about because it was basically trying to look for hey we need we want to justify this big rocket let's go back to the moon and so that's where the artemis program started but the sls goes way way back if you look at the sls uh i mean and also like the right Ryan, right, go ahead. right now 20 bucks in your pocket who do you bet sees the moon first uh, S, uh any self-grown government rocket or spacex well technically SpaceX is we'll be, we'll, contracted yeah, 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 to be yeah, the they, lander. Yeah, they, they will be landing on the moon no matter what. <laughs> yeah. So the government. Uh, so SpaceX, on that trick one. question. Ah. SpaceX. So and that's so and this is the this is the fun thing. So this is the way the, the so they built this, they're building, you know, the SLS rocket, which has been, you know, maybe, you know, thirty billion dollars so far. The the cost per launch is two billion dollars. There's a cost per year to about two and a half billion dollars, but two billion dollars per launch, okay? They have this the the Orion spacecraft, by the way, which is the spacecraft that's going to go on top of it. And the purpose of that is literally they're going to use the SLS to send the astronauts to the SpaceX rocket that, in theory, would be perfectly capable of taking astronauts to there. But they're going to put them on board this SLS, and which sounds hugely uh, inefficient. And you know, SLS, like funding, started back in 2006. We're 16 years later. Um, it is insane. Um, or the Orion spacecraft. I saw the Orion spacecraft uh, test launch they did years ago when they went to go test that because they assumed SLS was going to be just rolling off the, you know, assembly line any moment now. Um, right. That 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 didn't happen. So that was oh yeah, mm -hmm. 2014. That's when I was at Canaveral and I watched the exploration test flight. 2014. That's so bonkers. Wow. Nuts. You want to know what else is bonkers? The ability to support this show on patreon.com slash weird things. Yes. Ooh. And unlike the SLS, we will launch you to new heights of enlightenment when it comes to news of the weird. Brian, you must be crazy to think that you can go to patreon.com slash weird things. Make sure that you keep us loud, live, and independent each and every Monday afternoon, bringing you news from science and beyond. Not crazy. Just a little bit weird. Weird crazy. You hear the sirens outside? Yeah, I hope you hear the those are the outside. normal police coming for you. Yeah. Sorry, we forgot yeah. to tell you. They're onto our trail. And <clears throat> Probably should have mentioned that at the top of the show instead of doing those bits of business about improv <sighs> being on a boat. Exactly. This is the last episode involving Andrew Maine, unless we can post bail. Mm -hmm. And we can make that happen if you go to patreon.com slash weird things. Right. Yep, patreon goddamn <laughs> slash weird things. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, th I thought that was just gonna smooth no, off. Oh, this is why so much. this is why not you so shouldn't much. have let me on the boat. Okay. Uh, oh, also, right. if you're a patron, you get the After Things you. podcast early. Uh, we talk about a bunch of really uh, awesome, fun stuff. So head on over there right now, Patreon.com/slash Weird Things. 
so uh, uh got a got a news item for you oh discovery finally oh, some little, news news hey little, little scientific discovery for you yep they're still doing science um and uh i don't know any way to sort of cite but uh back in 1832 uh mm, the good old days yeah when everything was great Back, back, back. Uh, oh, uh, no problems for anybody uh, at all. Back, back, back when smallpox was an old, yep. comfy <laughs> cousin. I got my first real six string. <laughs> <laughs> Did, didn't have to worry about naming your child because maybe wasn't gonna live. Well, you yeah, save no, that. I mean, like, you didn't have to name your child. <laughs> uh, just keep naming other, them your name. <laughs> other human beings gonna have to stick. Uh, other human beings treated like, well, not human beings. And uh, details. This is a wonderful setup, they Andrew. Were awkward <laughs> details. <laughs> not they really. weren't uh, awkward back in 1832. Yeah. So 1832, a young, a young uh, young <laughs> naturalist by the name of 32. Power on, they're gonna keep doing this. No, thing it's fine. Go, <laughs> go ahead. Young naturalist by the name of Charles Darwin mm -hmm. was on the HMS Beagle. Yep. where he made many of his amazing discoveries, which led to his theories of natural selection. Yep, and help help change science. Help gave us a framework at which we can understand how things evolved where they were. He made a lot of very interesting observations. And he uh, saw something that was very curious that's been talked about before, and we weren't quite sure how it worked. And this is a phenomenon of a very miraculous animal, its ability to sort of just gently lift up into the sky and float away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I remember this. He discovered the hot air balloonist. Wow. And uh, if I may quote from this Wikipedia article, hmm. the hot air balloonist is a marvel, not only for his ability to float <laughs> high above the clouds. Wow, mm, wow. classic mm. Darwin. Ima very imaginative writing. But also writing. Yeah. for the tales. Chucky, Chuck D really was spitting. <laughs> Actually, uh, we're talking about... I'm pissed off that. We should never have let him on the boat. I swear to God, people. I was against it from the start. <laughs> That's true. I should have listened, Brian. Uh, but how much better would oddly, Charles Darwin have been with Flavor Flav? All right, go ahead. Oddly enough, uh, like uh, ranting Brad Pitt and 12 Monkeys, sometimes Brian's closer than he realizes. Oh, no! so, uh, only uh, the balloonists in question are spiders. What? So Spider scientists balloonist. have wondered... There is a, a hundred ballooning spiders. People have talked about these spiders. Oh my god! Stuff, I, you know, the, 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 the word balloon was in there. Yes, Brian. Uh. Yes, Brian. So uh. they discovered. They've noticed this was a phenomenon. It was known before Darwin, but Darwin was on the boat, looked at this, and said, "Ah, flying spiders! One of the most natural and wonderful things somebody could see." <laughs> and there had been theories though, like how does it work? They they admit these these strands of silk, and then they just sort of like later, and they just sort of drift off up foot away and just float off like James Bond at the end of a movie. So that was a question: is was it just air currents? Whatever. Now scientists believe they've discovered, and this is kind of awesome. They think they use an electrical field. What? what? Now I electricity. I, I, uh, uh, real real quick. Um. Two things. One is, I, I think I was in third grade at the time, but our neighborhood outside of Houston was beset by some kind of, of drifting spiders on strings. And, and, mm -hmm. and I assume it's a similar phenomenon. And uh, when you're a kid, you just assume whatever you're seeing is normal. I now recognize that I never seen anything like that since. And it was, must have been an extraordinary year for, for flying spiders or whatever. Well, uh, we've oh, talked about... Oh, go ahead. So, yeah, this uses a form of kind of like an electrostatic lift. We talked about this before about those lifters where you could take like a model train transformer with like a, an aluminum box kite and get the thing to float off the ground. Right. Or, or you, you, you could like, do like a triangle thing with a little a bunch of pegs on the bottom and you could create a field that yeah. it would uh, just hover. 
that crazy people call, oh, it's anti-gravity. Well, it's, you know, but uh, it is, it's a very interesting form of, of lift with something that's light enough. So Steins are saying that's what they think is going on, is that they're using basically electrical fields to lift themselves. And I would argue, and I've, I've, I've said this to people before, that like, if you want to look for a really revolutionary way to start exploring making vehicles that fly is to look into this phenomenon because we know it scales there's an energy problem it takes a tremendous amount of energy for it but there might be ways you know and so here we have an example of an animal effectively using its own anti-gravity device that's crazy so two uh two things pop to mind one is being in eighth grade and reading uh, a spider-man comic book in which electro figures out this is comic book canon, but again, what's canon in comic books? Uh, uh, that Spider-Man's uh, wall crawling ability was a form of static electricity, so Electro was able to make the the the, the wall crawler not be able to wall crawl. crawl. Uh, but then the other the other thing is, man, I could totally see with uh, some nanotech or or like um, uh, carbon nanotubes or something, some kind of structure big and wide enough. That it, that it really does, just like a football field, just sort of take off and is able to take a payload of a few hundred pounds all the way up. Yeah, there is a, a book I have here called Floating to Orbit, which was the idea of using, uh, that doesn't really, that's, that's not really an electrostatic lifter, but like a giant balloon, but then using uh, like ion propulsion, which is very different from this, but using ion propulsion to get to orbit by going slowly. Uh, which I really dug that, the idea that it gets up the upper atmosphere and just builds up speed. But here, it's just neat to see. Here's an insect that's apparently using electricity to just repel and fly off and then drift away. Would have been so, crazy if Tobey Maguire did that in the new Spider-Man movie. Just shot some it, stuff out of his butt Tom, and then no, Tom floated. Holland. Tom Holland's the new Spider-Man. I, have, I haven't seen it yet. Tom oh, Holland's no. the new Spider-Man. Oh, uh -oh. no. Spoilerman. Uh -oh. He's spoiler I'm in kidding, our boat. I'm kidding, I'm we should kidding, never have I'm let kidding. him on. It's on VOD. <laughs> <laughs> They're showing him in the commercials. I'm <laughs> I've seen it. I've no, seen it. And that was stink. funny. I was watching watching the, the ads for that change to like, yeah. ah, look, Dr. Str is this a Doc Ock tentacle? Ooh, yeah. I wonder what surprise. We're like, it's Doc Ock, everybody, I know it. Oh, the Green Goblin, I think Defoe's in it. Got it. Yeah. And then you're like, what? So uh, <laughs> uh, my wife, uh, she, she's she been working for a company that's got this uh, database of actors that she has to go through and sort of like update their stuff. And then she's like, well, Doctor Strange just got spoiled for me. I'm like, what? <laughs> well, I just saw who blank blank. I'm like, oh, and she's like, oh, this got spoiled for me. I just saw blank blank in that. So oh, that's like, funny. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, uh, so uh, question, Andrew. Um, we know there's no such thing as a free lunch when it comes to energy, and uh, we know like. Um, uh, uh, I don't know. There's various uh, mechanisms that that take away ever so slightly from like uh, the the Earth spin or what have you. We, where does in a world where a spider is getting a free ride up to to you know the hundred foot heavens uh, on electrostatic? Wh where is that energy coming from? Uh, is, I, I, is... I haven't read into it, but it could be. You know, if you're getting, let's say, a, a, a theoretically, one is from the wind or friction or something on the, the same as where we generate static electricity. That might be the thing is just literally the movement of hot, warm air currents past the threads might build up a charge. And that's could be where it's coming from. Um, if I read the thing, I could probably tell you in a better way. But yeah, it, it, it looks like um, uh, it, it looks like the. Uh, this is from the abstract of the paper here. I believe what happens is when they spin the silk, kind of like the um, the magic wand trick with the straw. So, so it's its own energy that is electrically Friction, st yeah. uh, static electricity charging everything. These results demonstrate that spiders are able to utilize charge on their silk to attain electrostatic flight, even in the absence of any aerodynamic lift. So, so it's a biological charge, uh, from what we understand right now, that that charges the 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 thread and gets it up into the wind current. I, I believe so. If yeah. I'm reading this right. Yeah. Uh, so that's fascinating. I, I remember there was a, uh, 
a researcher I know, Dave Sands, had uh, – this is a story I've told before, but it really is a neat story. Is he was working for um, Montana and, like, agricultural department, and they'd have problems where they would get, let's say, like, a bunch of wheat that would have, like, a blight on it. They'd go look at it, and there was the blight, and it was just, you know, some sort of, you know, in, you know parasitic, you know, bacterial or whatever that was infecting it. And – they were trying to figure out how to get rid of it. And one of the things they could go do is they would take the, the seeds and they would throw uh, copper. They'd mix it with copper because copper would kill that off, right? So they'd mix it off. They'd kill it off. They knew that there was like, they're very clear there was none of it was in there. They'd go out to some remote field, plant it, it would grow, and then they would see the blight again. And they're like, and it was frustrating for them because like they, they look through every single element of it and they go look at the blight. They can see the blight, but then they go to the microscope. They can't find any of the bacteria that's causing it. Can't find it. And that was stressful for them because like this is just should it's they, they see the effect of it but they can't find the thing that's causing it yeah so they have to use this airplane to go out to this remote field to go do these tests because it's like in montana way remote some research agricultural field that's in the middle of nowhere that's isolated from anything else sometimes when you're in an airplane you go out there and you see like a little patch of land that looks like a tiny farm those are actually research f facilities because they mm. keep them away from everything else mm. so Dave's like, man, like they, they're trying to spend it. They're looking all around. They look in the soil. They look all around. They can't find it anywhere. They do swabs, everything to find it, can't find it. And finally, they're getting back into the airplane. And as they're going up, Dave sees a cloud. It's like, fly through the cloud. What? He's like, fly through the cloud. They fly through the cloud. He sticks out a sample kit through the window. And as it goes through, it collects the vapors, the moisture, whatever. They get back into the lab and they found the bacteria. And when they looked at it, they realized the bacteria had on its surface this protein structure, this particular protein structure. In the morning, uh, when it started to warm, it would have its like it have an electrical charge, and it would drift up into the air and go all the no, way up into the sky. Weird. And wow. because of the protein structure, water molecules would start to accumulate around the protein, and when it reached a certain point, it would the nucleus it would basically form like an ice crystal. And then start to rain, and then basically cause precipitation, and start to attract more, and then fall back down to the earth and make it rain. And it was this bacteria that was a symbiotic relationship with the field, where it was actually keeping the wheat, the plants alive, and doing the cycle. And so they started testing for this, and they found out this bacteria. And one, they actually now one of the ways they do cloud seeding is they use a like a protein, whatever, similar to that that shape, because they right. realize that shape for nucleating, like raindrops works. They found this in other places around the world. And when you look at climate predictions and climate models, things like this, nobody is even really beginning to seriously factor in how much systems like this play a part in it. The fact that you have a bacteria that is regulating and creating, like what makes a rainforest? You know, one is density, location, et cetera, but you may not be able to get a rainforest to take off. Or if you do something to the environment that kills off this bacteria or whatever you or, spray or, or, or something. Or makes it, lit, I mean, quite simply, like uh, let's say this one bacteria, for sake of argument, is is one of the key generators of, of uh, nucleation points for rain. Take that away. Ain't no rain. You got no rainforest, no matter how many trees or seeds or, or density you have. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, Pseudomonas... Syngrea is an ice nucleating bacteria whose freezing action causes water vapor to condense in the clouds. It's just a crazy, crazy thing. And if you look at uh, bioprecipitation is uh, an entire field. And if you look at bio bioprecipitation, the article mentions uh, my friend Dave Sands. And this is going back to 1982. And it's really just a crazy, crazy sort of thing. But like ski resorts where they use the freeze-dried you know, ice nucleating proteins, those were derived from that. Damn. How how many other how many other processes and things like are that are out there? Five. No. I'm glad you asked. Five. Five. <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment. Yeah. Well, now we know. Mr. Um, five. So. <laughs> and the nickname is Ice Minus Bacteria Bacteria. Ice Ice Minus? Ice. Because there was the minus. uh the Remember the uh, Ice Nine, which was the, uh, oh. the there was a theoretical, you know, the, from the science fiction story, the idea that somebody makes um, uh, a uh, Kurt Vonnegut's novel Couch Cradle, the idea that you make this thing that will turn all water into ice. Mm. Oh, it it starts an ice molecule, it starts like an ice crystal, and then every water that touches it touches everything else. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, wow, I didn't realize that was. I didn't even know that this was a thing that we could effectively make rain. 
Yeah. Make clouds. Yep. Uh, you, get, yeah. Get, 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 make take. it rain. Get, you get, broke. I mean, I mean, like a... if there's no humidity and it's over a desert and there's no water in the sky, then no. But, but, but if it's pretty dense and what you really need is just like, like, uh, for example, we shot that video of super cooled, uh, uh, liquids that you, you slam them and mm. there's a nucleation point and all of a sudden ice forms. It's similar for, uh, vapor to form clouds and uh, rain. Wow. I was at a meeting at the amazing, at, uh, the amazing Randy's office, James Randy, the James Randy Foundation. And we're sitting at a table and Randy goes and goes in the refrigerator, grabs a bottle of water, sets it down on the on the meeting table, and it just immediately crystallizes. Just immediately crystallizes. And I'd never seen that over. And I'm like going, what? And then uh, the, the secretary goes, oh, Randy, that's amazing. How did you do that? And Randy's like, picks it, goes, eh, you know, sets it back down and carries on and walks out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> And it was totally, totally accident. But now if you put, you know, if you keep, as you showed, you know how you do that. But it's, if you've never seen it before, holy cow, it, it is like. amazing. Yeah. 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 Wow. And I just like Randy's like, eh, you know, it's just a thing I do. And he probably went in to go Google, you know, yeah. like <laughs> water turning What just happened? Happened. <laughs> uh, so, uh. Uh, we've got a new solution for Python control. You know, Pythons are sort of a problem. Uh, yeah. yeah, very difficult programming language. Finally. Uh, no, Python's actually, you know, yeah, I should have gone the other way with this. Super difficult. Unless, it's unless, difficult. Uh, it's yeah. really, it's really, it's really hard. I mean, I mean, it's I mean, I mean I, 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 seems like it'd be easier a, if there was a certain artificial intelligence that could translate my natural language instructions into it. But I mean, that's science fiction talk. Right. Do you think we live in the future? Come on. <laughs> no. Uh, Spawn con. This is a. <laughs> we a, talked about it for like 40 minutes last week. <laughs> I wasn't here. Oh, right. You were here last week. Uh, so uh, apparently um, some cameras in Florida cop captured something, which again, that's very loaded. Florida camera catches yep. something weird. With a Python. By the way, I'm pitching my new show, my new reality show. It's called Florida. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Florida hey, remains undefeated. I may yeah. or may not have been watching uh, old Miami Vice episodes yesterday <laughs> on Peacock, and I may or may not have seen a preview for a show all about somebody who has money troubles and finds out that he can get a bounty for killing pythons in Florida. Oh, yeah, that's yes. reality show. No, that's an uh, NBC no, no, comedy. No, it's, yeah. a, comedy. It's, it's a comedy from uh, uh, Daryl from from The Office. Oh, Daryl yeah. from The Office. Uh, oh, yeah, in the warehouse. Craig, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Robinson. No, not Craig Ferguson. Or Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> I said Craig Robinson. No, oh, Bryce no, said, Bryce Bryce said Ferguson. Ferguson. Oh, oh, oh. Who wanted yeah. him on the boat? <laughs> <laughs> he was always here. He made I'm the boat. I'm just going to kill a wee python. <laughs> I mean, we don't, Greg, we don't know how to steer It's got Claudia Doherty in it. We don't know how to steer the boat Australian. or move the boat, so we kind of have to have Bryce on the boat. So <laughs> also, true. the boat is a party boat, and we're still in the bay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh. Oh, go uh, ahead. The cameras, we may have an ally in our fight. Because so pythons, as, as many of you probably already know, pythons are not indigenous to South Florida, but because of the exotic pet trade in Florida and drug dealers and exotic pets, we have a lot of pythons. And pythons can be a problem because they can eat like bird eggs, they can eat other things, other animals, and they can put a pressure on this, which can just throw the ecosystem into imbalance. So one of the things we do is we, we will pay people to go out there and hunt pythons, which is awesome uh that's a job that you can mm. have uber hunting pythons mm. so mm, it's the reverse of doordash have, you know so have, have, have we yet encountered the um uh the bounty problem that beset i think it was in india where they set a uh, uh i believe it was the british that set a, a a bounty for every cobra and uh people figured out really fast <laughs> Well, if we just raise a bunch of cobras <laughs> and kill cobras. them, yeah. <laughs> we can get a lot of bounties. <laughs> yeah, uh, that can be a problem. Like, we're trying to help you with this problem here. Um, I and... mean, I, I, uh, I'll say, look, if, if, if you have never spent a lot of time in the Everglades, <laughs> like, them paying you to just be in the Everglades for a significant period of time, is that is well worth any amount of money. That place sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, on a camera, we captured... What we may have an ally, we may have a helper in our fight against pythons. Thank All right, goodness. here we go. Uh, uh, anyone have a guess before we log in? Uh, uh, oh, I robots. think it's probably a wee little kitty cat. 
Uh, I, I, I think it's a bird of some sort. Mm. I'm going to guess. Oh, what if there's a... Don't, don't kangaroos... Eat, don't kangaroos mess with snakes? That classic yeah, Florida, that Florida, Florida kangaroo. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this the is this the normal state? I'm sorry. Is this taking place in normal state USA? <laughs> touche, touche. Damn. Uh, um. Uh. Yeah. So uh, I'd say point to Justin, but not a wee cat. Uh oh. A cat with a, a wee tail, thus a bobbed tail, thus a bobcat. Ooh. No kidding. And there's what? this great camera. They got some footage of a python and a bobcat facing off in Big Cypress National Let's Preserve. Let's go. Let's go. Apparently, bobcats decided, you know, these python eggs are exotic. They're good. And I hear they're keto friendly. I mean, what's he going to do? Bite me? He can't. He can't strangle me. I'm, I'm too lithe. I'm a bobcat. So, so looking... there we got this this bobcats also, eating these, these eggs, eggs are gigantic. They do oh, look delicious. Yeah. I'm getting a bit hungry. Imagine you're like, oh look, look at this beautiful. Is this like a parrot egg? I'm gonna take this home and keep it warm under my pillow. <laughs> All right, where is and this? Then... Where is this python coming? They do look like 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 grade quintuple egg uh, or uh, quintuple a. So eggs. this They're this big eggs. This bobcat has been up. Oh, there oh. he goes. He's Yum. he's eating. He's getting a little munch. He's getting a little bite of roux. Yum, yum, yum. Yep. Yeah. He's just hanging out. Anybody got he, any salt? Man, this, this seems looking like... looking over his shoulder <laughs> like, uh, what is this? Is there a trick to this? This, this is too delish. Oh, when he comes oh, back no, at night. No, he wants a little midnight <gasps> snacky. Uh-oh. A little rumbly in his uh. tumbly. And this is over a long period of time. This is multiple I hours. Know. He goes and he comes this is back. Like somebody trying to get the con- continental breakfast at 2 a.m. Uh, coming on in, looking left and right. Looks like he's still getting his yeah. frosted flakes, though. <laughs> I mean, they can't lock those down. They have to draw the line somewhere. Yeah, that's All the right, law. So he's he, they're they're chowing down now. At some point, this python's gonna come out though, and we're gonna be we're gonna have a, a rumble. This has been six hours in the dark. This Man, cat has been going back and forth. That is a looking cat. <laughs> that is that is. He knows he's not supposed to eat eggs. No and now eggs. Now it's the following day. He's still <laughs> looking at the eggs. What's up with this cat? What? Oh wait, is he is burying that them? Oh, is he? Yeah. I thought like, that was him I'll fighting the later. Python, but not even that. No, no, he's burying them for later. Save Where's it the... for later. And he's back the next day. What's up with this cat? Wow. Or that's a few hours later. Um, the same day. It looks like June second of last year. Wow. What we need is somebody to go pet the cat and say good kitty. So it just keeps doing that. Or oh, we give oh, oh. like so. So it just occurred to me that maybe the story this is uh, like like the oh. python never shows up and this is just our ally <laughs> eating its babies. He eats the eggs. He yeah, doesn't actually no, fight a great. python. Okay, yeah. But there is a photo. Like we do see a photo, and it maybe from this. I believe it is from this camera. Which, if we scroll ahead, we do see a point where there is a cat facing a python. Let's see. No, this cat just took down all these eggs. Oh, here we There's go. Oh, uh, python. Oh, my God. Whoa, the python's huge. Okay, so the cats come back. It's nighttime now. And oh, he's oh this the... time, <gasps> the security guard is there and says, Sir, all right, back uh, it up. Back it up. We want, we want to see the beginning here. There's cat, bobcat versus python. All right, okay, so, so the cat it eats a bunch of eggs and then it's like, Okay. Oh, he hey, hid... What's up? It's another day. He hid the eggs. He came back uh, an hour or so later and dug them up, or no, they had so, been yeah, dug up. Yeah, I think somebody, I, I think he came back to the buffet and it's like, Whoa. Uh-oh. And the oh, next thing you know, my eggs? Yeah, this big old python is laying on top of these eggs. Okay, who it's do you think hours, wins man. in Ooh. this fight? Between the like python. A, str- a straight a fight between a python and a bobcat. Because a bobcat, I mean, uh, mm, could, could go either way. I think it's the element of surprise. Oh, yeah, I think that's... I think if the python drops out of a tree on the bobcat, bobcat is done for. But if a bobcat is really hungry and it has teeth... <laughs> so the bobcat tried to visit at night, saw the python was still there, comes back in the morning the next day. This comes has been like in and starts, starts poking at this uh, SOB. He's, he's just like, I don't know, are you really going to stop me from eating these eggs? There this were python's 42 like, yeah, for eggs. Real. 42, 42 eggs. How many did the did the bobcat get? Uh, it looks wait, forty two. Sorry, forty two eggs had been destroyed. Yeah, and the twenty two were damaged but potentially viable. Wow! Oh, I'll I got tell a you possum. what. 
That, that <laughs> omelet hey guys, is the what's cat's going meow. On? I'm Phil the Possum. I'm your neighbor. And <laughs> you boys need to stop fighting. <laughs> Why does your breath smell like my babies? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Wow. Antagonistic interaction between Bobcat and Python. That's, um, that's dude, this is the stuff that happens in the Everglades like all the time. Like, we just only caught that because there was a camera there. Like, this is well, constantly yep. happening in the Everglades. And for like USA Today, USA Today to report it as a never before seen interaction shows how much of nature we only have eyewitness testimony whatever usa today wake me up when a kangaroo's there too <laughs> yeah. that would actually be a weird story <laughs> told you well i told you that like, i went to a party up in the in the hollywood hills in this mansion this people who've been in the business for years have and it's kind of this crazy looking mansion and go through there and i'm walking around like it's got an amazing view of the the city it's overlooking this sort of precipice he walked through one of the rooms and there are a bunch of these old timers playing like card games there. There's another room with people doing DJ stuff. And then uh, it was a very intense kind of like, you know, kind of just Hollywood sort of party sort of thing. And I go walking up some steps and I'm like, man, I think I'm a little overwhelmed. Like maybe I'm going to go home. And I look to my left and I see a kangaroo in an ah, enclosure. <laughs> and I'm like, yep. <laughs> Time to go. Exit the uh, stage <laughs> yeah. left. Uh, oh, oh, how much more weirdness can I handle? Can I, might? Yeah. Like, ah! <laughs> so maybe that was uh, maybe you were just the new pope. I don't know. Uh, I'm like, this is this is, yep. Um, uh -huh. But uh, gentlemen, we had a cool. Uh, I'm gonna self promotion. Yeah, I was involved in a little project. I worked with an organization called Open AI. And last week we released Dolly 2, which is mm -hmm. an image generation, text to image model. And that uh, it kind of blew up, was very, very, uh, made a lot of big waves because it's a very neat technology. And I could kind of go into more of about that, but I don't know if you guys uh, had a chance to see what it's capable of doing. I did. Yeah, I yeah, did. Well, yeah. We uh, talked all uh, about uh, it last week. Right? Yeah. 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 So uh, now in the aftermath of this is we're looking at sort of make its way around the world and i don't know if you've seen uh i just watched it on a japanese tv show <laughs> which cool uh and there's yeah. a new york times piece on it that just came out yep. two days ago or new york times magazine which so there's that so uh i gotta did i plug the wait list last week you did yes yeah. you did at opening okay plug the wait list again uh, you can tell that i've been in I've been in promotion mode. And yes, I, I, the I, I, I did have over again. the wonderful experience of um, uh, I was able to get my my. Oh, access. we made the image right. Uh, what's that? And we made the image here, right? Oh, did you? That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, the uh, 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 I did get the chance to talk to a friend of mine who was unfamiliar, and by reputation, he understood how good AI had gotten or whatever, but. Uh, uh, I had recently reset my access, and I was like, would you like to see it in action? And uh, uh, my goodness, um, OpenAI is a good joke teller. Uh, uh, I enjoyed matching it. Uh, Tell me a joke about blank meeting a libertarian genie. And uh, they were all great. Or write a tweet in the style of blank. And uh, uh, hmm. it's, 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 it's amazing. It's, it's really remarkable and terrifying. And I know why... And I know why I started the story again, because, Brian, you weren't here last week. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. And so to me, oh, I got to tell Brian. So uh, yeah. explaining my absent mindedness. I have an excuse this time. But, uh, uh, no, it was it was really, really great. Um, uh, I, I, I can't believe how good the synthesis is and how the same seed will yield such vastly different surprising results. It's amazing. How, so, how, how fast is this Dolly waitlist moving? Yeah. I need, I need, I need my access. I think I signed up last for science. week. <laughs> uh, it's going to be gradual. We're, we're, mm. we're building it out. And remember part of what we do is we want to see, we want to release these things carefully. We want to see how they're used. If there's the potential for misuse, et cetera, because in trying to develop really advanced AI, it has an impact, potential impact on a lot of people. And there's a lot of people that just want to use the tool, but there are other people who are saying, Hey, this could cause, uh, problems and if you go read the research paper or the paper that went with it we go into some of the details of that as saying like hey these are our concerns this is how we're trying to you know deal with this so uh you know as we can handle more people we add more people 
Nice. All right. So I'll, I'll, yeah. I won't. I won't yeah. Is there any way we can jump the line? Don't count on it. No, we're not. You want to know what, Bryce? We are not special. We are. We are. We are just like everybody else. Very, cons- very interested about this technology, and eventually, our time will come. Our time will come. One day. One day. One day. And in, in fact, my first search is going to be a uh, a, a very sad boy waiting at a computer forever. <laughs> forever, no. <laughs> yeah. Save him. <laughs> uh, ask OpenAI about the joke about Karl Marx encountering a libertarian genie. It's pretty good. When you say it, you mean GPT-3, right? The G- yeah, GPT-3. Yeah, GPT-3. GPT-3. Yeah, yeah. I still have to get access okay. to that, too. I don't think I ever got a chance All to right, it, Greedy I'm, wow. Sins. Wow. I'm giving you an opportunity to talk about your uh, It looks like Greedo tool. asked first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anybody got any picks? <laughs> uh, I do. Um... Uh, not to play into a stereotype of myself, but uh, it was recommended to me that I go in totally blind to see Come From Away, the Broadway musical that was on uh, <laughs> Apple TV+. Plus. That's right. Uh, it was great. So it, it, is, it was, it, is it a movie or is it like shot, it's, a it's, shot musical? It's a shot musical, but okay. most importantly, it's um, considering where the the musical takes place. Of course, you know, it's it's in Broadway in the middle of New York City. Yep. Uh, it is in the middle of lockdown, the pandemic. They show all these empty streets before and after. And they're like, this is the uh-huh. first Broadway show people are going to. It is about a horrible moment in uh, New York City's history mm. uh, and about all of the rerouted planes that landed in the middle of Newfoundland. And it was oh. it was delightful and wonderful and magical. Uh, I, I liked it quite a bit. I'm glad I went in. Uh, now, when I say when I went in blind, like I hit play, and in the first five seconds, I was like, oh, my God, I know what this is, and immediately explained it to the kids. Uh, but uh, it was great. It, I, I liked it quite a bit. Lest they have the story explained to them. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, or, or at least to to assure them that their time was not about to be yes. wasted. No, no, no. Yeah, it is, it is a Tony Award-winning, critically acclaimed wow. musical. Very cool. I feel like I had not even, like, we report on all this stuff on court colors all the time i did not even hear about this coming out last year but yeah i i, th- I think it's a case of like uh hollywood and broadway uh traveling in different circles but uh but mm. the the story for those who haven't heard is uh you know during 9 11 was happening they had to land all of the planes and uh the unique history of um uh, uh, uh the airport in newfoundland whose name escapes me uh it used to be a refueling station in the 60s and uh, so propeller planes would come in, they would land, like, uh, and all the famous people would be there. They have this giant collection, giant airport, but then jet engines made it to where you could do inner, uh, you know, coast to coast without refueling. And so suddenly this town had 7,000 people, and then suddenly, or sorry, 9,000 people, a uh, gander, that's what it is. And then 7,000 people showed up overnight. And so oh. what do you do when your population doubles overnight? I don't know. Ask the MCU. They apparently did that, and nobody addressed it. <laughs> they did. Falcon and Winter Soldier. It just I mean, wasn't good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm. You know, what, do it again, good. but better. Do yeah, better dude, do better. come from away, but do better. come <laughs> from away, but better. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, uh, I, I, uh, I've Teasdale, last time Teasdale was here, he was singing songs from that. Uh, yeah, oh. no, it's, it's, which good. are beautiful, stirring songs that ran. If you're only listening to him singing songs, they're beautiful, stirring songs that randomly steer into 9-11 oh uh because it's a musical about 9-11 right, right. but if yeah. it's like uh, and specifically it's about that strange and mysterious uh period before the internet before cell phones and they go out of their way to remind people that cell phones are rare and yeah. that you can't you you can't know everything at all times uh and even when they do refer to the horrific details of 9-11 all they say is like uh, what we saw on the tube you know uh, uh but but it's really about the uh joyful giving nature of a small town mm. trying to help out a bunch of people who are having a rough go. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of a rough day, that one. <laughs> Very cool. Um, I've been forced to watch a show. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Because uh, uh, I'm not going to name names of people uh. who have an inability to not talk about this show. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, it is. But uh, I had to start watching Severance for uh, uh, elsewise. It Severance. Would, wow. it would just what? be it would just be described to me second by second, <laughs> word by word, uh, 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 what happened. So I'm two episodes in. We watched the first two episodes last night. My my wife and I, 
Uh, and I love it. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, it definitely is a bit of a, a, a slow burn, I think, is a show that that is benefited by uh, the streaming age. Um, but it it seems based on how everybody was excited about it at the end, I am I am uh, uh, patiently walking with it as it very deliberately reveals its its plot. And I, I, it feels like a very confident show, which I which I always enjoy, especially when it's a concepty show, you know, you don't want the, the worst part is when it's a concepty show that's kind of running by the seat of its pants. But, but this seems very confident. So I like it. Uh, it's probably not a surprise that uh, because part of the reason you're watching it is because a lot of people are talking about it. People who I don't know and would not associate yeah. with. Certainly uh, there wasn't whatever. a dinner that happened on Thursday where uh, 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 Brian started with me talking to me about the show that I said, Hey, please don't talk about it. I'm going to watch it. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, but boy, is it great. And when this <laughs> happens and I'm like, like Brian, stop talking. And then mm. another couple came to dinner and uh. he's like, Oh, we were just talking about separate. <laughs> and he's like, Oh my God, I love it. When blah, blah, blah happens. So and I'm weird. like, I have Can no, you guys shut up? I, I have I have no memories of this dinner at all. It's yeah, like it no. happened to well, another person. It's, it's because yeah, it's so weird. Because you, you have you have you have you have your severed memories for when you spoil <laughs> television I th- shows. I think you made the biggest case oh, for wow. the severed process right there. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go talk to Brian. Flip. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. And then oh, who's in Spider Man? Oh, and then who showed up in <laughs> Doctor Strange? Cool. That's amazing. <laughs> Flip. Anyhow, anyhow, moving on. <laughs> I, I want multiple versions of that. I just want to turn that on. Severance is good. Severance is a good show. Um, ben I, Stiller, great job directing. Like, really good directing. Man, really people, good directing. People forget that that man, his first directed movie was Reality Bites, and then he did The Cable Guy. Uh, like, like, that man has has uh, been a, 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 an amazing director from the jump. Also directed Heat Vision and Jack. He did. Mm-hmm. I got a pick. Yay! Uh, I I was introduced to this blindly a couple of weeks ago over on uh, our friend uh, the Rage Select channel on YouTube, um, and I was surprised that I liked the game that he showed me, and then I am still playing it today. Um, it is the new Gearbox game, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Um, do you know the Borderlands games? Sure. What if they were a tabletop RPG story? Okay. End end of conversion. Like it's it's just Wait, that. They've so, taken so, so, Borderlands. So it's, it's it's not a first person shooter. Oh, it, it is. It's got a lot of guns in it. Got it. You're you're saying the the but, setting. Yeah, right. it is yeah. a high fantasy sort of setting. Got it. And it is not like doesn't really delve into any of the Borderlands lore. It's all its own sort of story. And so you're playing this campaign first person style as someone who's playing this game with Tiny Tina. And so she's dungeon mastering and you're in the world and ch- things are changing in real time. Um, oh, oh, Annalisa oh. just ran in. This is, she could confirm it's super fun. It is, it's, it's a very fun sh- game. Um, and uh, I'll say the thing I don't like about Borderlands is the stories and I like the story in this. So um, uh, very cool. Um, and if you like co-op games, games you play together with folks, Borderlands is, is great. Gearbox and Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford just bought the Magic Castle. Oh yeah, so, that's right. Way. Oh, BT Dubs, yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, but bought the castle, which is yeah. that, that, we'll try that, to continue and, what it's doing. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. With, with, with the idea, because by the way, unless somebody specifically, either Randy Pitchford or somebody very much like Randy Pitchford, bought oh, all that kit and caboodle, that was the the castle was not going to be there forever. Right. right, and mm-hmm. specifically, like as I understand it, as an outsider who has no inside information, uh, uh, the the Magic Castle was leasing this property. As I understand it, Randy Pitchford brought, bought the property and wants yeah, to make it's, sure. it's the there's the Academy of Magical Arts, which is the club that runs it, and so they were leasing the the building itself, and then the the fixtures belong to uh, like Milt Larson and then just a whole complicated thing. And Randy is a lover of magic. His father, his, his great uncle, great uncle was Cardini. And wow. so he's got oh, a you wow. know, kind of touched with the history of this. So anyhow, he's a big fan of it. He actually in his house in Texas, he's got his own magical theater, which was a pretty amazing. A friend of mine got married there in a really neat place. So, you know, I think it's neat. He loves, you know, 
Gearbox makes beautiful things, and part of it's the people that work there, including Randy, and so yeah. very, very cool. Um, I watched a lot of stuff. Uh, I've been watching Moon Knight. Uh, I watched a uh, Netflix documentary, and watched the new James Bond movie, finally. And my pick is going to be that Mitchell and Webb look. Hey! What, what That's a great, the thing. I, what a great so, series. There was uh, uh, there is a, a documentary on Netflix about Jimmy Savile, which he was the uh, the British television presenter who, well, watched the trailer, mm, but uh, did some very bad. It's a very interesting story. I don't the documentary. I don't know if it quite landed for me in the way that it did. It was it felt like a very slow burn, and the way they they kind of approached the story was a different, interesting choice. Um, but. Uh, but you, you know that kind of puts you down that rabbit hole of looking up like Jimmy Savile and because you have like this is the documentary story what happened but as we know often because there's a point where somebody is like a, a reporter is very earnest but he's like and they show the early days of search and he's like I kept searching for you know this his name connected to something else and I'm like wait you're a journalist searching for another journalist to have covered the story like. Right. Mm. Maybe and then finally the story breaks and it's another journalist who breaks the story and gets some witnesses to talk and then it's like, well, why don't we talk to them? I don't know. But again, I think I think it's it's definitely check out the documentary, whatever, come to your own thoughts. But I was doing the search and I found this like Mitchell and Webb look clip that somebody pointed out from before the whole thing bore came out about Jimmy Savile, which is they're doing it one, it's this remember that Justin, you'll remember the director telling the actor about shooting him for his nude scene. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but nobody will see. Oh yeah, I'll see. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's just the creepiest thing ever. And then it immediately cuts to it cuts to a middle of a news broadcast, and they go three consecutive life sentences, and it's Jimmy <laughs> Savile's face. And this is years wow. before that Savile was alive and hat broke through. And like, and his editors are just when you think you know a guy, and da da da, and they move into the right next thing, and they're like, what did they know? Yeah. What uh, did they know? <laughs> so, uh, one of the most influential sketch series of all time. It doesn't get mentioned in the same way that a lot of other contemporary series do. But if you look back, I mean, like some of these uh, clips still show up. Number one, uh, are we the baddies? One of the oh, greatest, one of the greatest sketches of all time. Uh, but also there was another one that, that, uh, was making the rounds when the lockdown happened about, uh, uh two guys talking about working from home. <laughs> And the one's like, uh, 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 so have you gotten over the wanking yet? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, what are you, what are you talking about? And then his wife leaves and he's like, does it ever stop? He's like, eventually. <laughs> uh, but no, just, just what an iconic, an iconic show. And that's a bad piece. Where, uh, was it, is it streaming anywhere, Andrew? Or did you just find uh, there... some clips? I, I found them it's on YouTube, actually. I was trying to find out if I could just buy it somewhere. Maybe maybe BBC has it somewhere, but I found a bunch of clips on YouTube. So um, I was actually like, I think I would just like to buy the series. We met uh, years ago. Justin and I met Robert Webb and David Mitchell at yep. a film festival in Florida because they did a movie called Magicians, which is really funny. Super nice guys. Just super, super nice guys. Very I don't, nice dudes. Yeah, I don't know how much they were expecting to like encounter the two biggest Mitchell and Webb fans in the world in, in, in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, remember when you did this? Uh, yeah. Did you do this? That was cool. It was just, it's like, geez, you know, <laughs> which is no. They were they were great. They were super uh, uh, gracious with their time and and uh, uh, yeah. I mean, Jesus, just just uh, they, they they don't get the they don't get the glory uh, uh, here in the way that they should. So watch that yeah. peep show. They're they're amazing. Uh, it looks like it's on YouTube. Yeah, it looks like you yep. can pull them up on YouTube. If nice. you're... Yeah, number Wang. Number Wang is like oh, just... number Wang. Number Wang. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gentlemen, it's been weird. Get off my boat. As <laughs> like a like a bird. Okay. <laughs> I gotta go try. <laughs> To play poor substitute for Bonnie. I'll be All right. right. Bye. 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 Brian's leaving. Singing the Brian's so leaving a whale? song. Can we do a whale? All right. Well, we're going to. Just the whole conversation about severance.
Just right, like as if I were, <laughs> I, I as if I didn't just ask him stop talking about. It. He found somebody else. He's like, yeah, okay, so you're not gonna talk to me about it. New person? Yes, you'll talk to me about it. Yeah, that's. Uh, I believe it. it yeah, believe it's it. a very interesting pathology, Mr. Brian. <laughs> it's a very, very fascinating. My father has it to the Schwood disease to a to a mild my degree. My dad will say I watched a really good movie, and then he'll explain the plot. And yeah. my brother and I would be like, Dad, no, I got I got twelve bucks. I can buy a movie ticket. Dad, I, I got a movie <laughs> ticket. I can I can see this. I have the capability. <laughs> and it's just Well, you know, the thing is, is that uh, like Yeah. But it, it does show we all see things differently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well that and also it's like he he might because he kept saying, like, oh, this isn't a thing. This isn't a thing. And like he might be right, but it's a high concept show, so it's like I don't you even don't know be the context. For... Well, because it's like it, it it's everything means something else and every, and, and stuff. So it's like if you're like, and I'm making this up. It's like, oh well, you know the purple file, the purple file, blah blah blah. And it's like, well, I don't. They're probably gonna tease that, and I'm not gonna. Joey, know. Do you mean the red envelope? He might have meant the red envelope. I, I think I mostly <laughs> meant the purple file. I don't. Know. <laughs> We're joking. Oh, I don't uh, okay. know. He doesn't even know. All right. I even know. No, actually, I think I got to the red envelope. I think I I was making that up. There is a red envelope. Yeah. There is a red envelope? Yeah. Oh, the one in his car? That, yeah. That he, oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Do you, either of you gentlemen need a break before we do I other do, things? Yeah. Okay, go I for do. it. I do. Uh, All right. Well, here, Justin, you go, go first. Okay. You go first. I can, I can, I can hang out. Hi, Justin. Hey, what's up, Hello. Bryce? Um, I've been, play I've been playing a lot of I, in the wake of Founders Day, yeah, and in the Valley before we start Marbles up again. I'm yeah. playing some more games, so I've been playing a lot of that Tiny yeah, Tina's Tiny game. Tina's Wonderland. Um, and, uh, by the way, we still have we we have a, we have a Vegas excursion as well. Oh, right, right. we have. I yes. you need to put that on your on your little on your on your on your daily calendar. I would love to get an itinerary of when it is or what I'm doing. <laughs> We should talk to Brian about that. Yeah. Um, so I've been playing that. Uh, I, I've been so you you know uh, the Phoenix Wright games, the Ace Attorney games. Yeah. Where you it's like a visual novel. Objection. You, hey, and so you go and defend people in yeah, what is clearly court. a Japanese uh, court law. Oh, no, I don't see legal color, system. but sure. <laughs> so there's a, a new game I started playing the other day called Legal Dungeon on the PlayStation. Oh my God, Bryce. And Instead of playing an attorney, yeah, you play. What do you play? You play like a lieutenant in the police, who prepares the cases. So someone already goes and does all the investigating, and they give you the casework. Yeah, and you have to like prepare the indictment and figure out all the legal precedent. Okay. So you have to say like, oh yeah, well hey, you stole this item. Here is the law that says even though it was a free item. Stealing it is is illegal and yeah. Um, I and it's got like some choice stuff in terms of how strong of a case you present to get someone indicted or not. Um, it's it's interesting. It's PC app. What are we doing here? Uh, I've got it on the PlayStation. I wouldn't be surprised if it's on PC as well. Yeah, other platforms feels feels a little. Uh, is it like indie? Yeah, definitely. A little it's, indie. It's very much like a mouse and pointer interface. Gotcha. So if you're on a keyboard and mouse, that might DA be. simulator. Uh oh no 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 not no, DA no 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 AG D Attorney General. You are you are putting all the stuff together. You're like the middle ground because you work for the police, so you set up the yeah. case. But whether they get indicted or like after it's it's interesting once you finish a, a level. They go, okay, hey, you put to put together the case and you recommended that they be indicted. And then uh, we send it over to uh, uh, to the, the attorney general or who had, the prosecutor and they decided, yes, we will prosecute. And then the legal system ended up saying they were innocent. And so you actually like lose you points. You just did all, your, all this for nothing. <laughs> but it, e it even goes through this whole thing of like... Uh, uh, okay, well, the initial verdict was this, but then they appealed, and then all that. Like, it's it's very interesting, very well. Um, uh, very, very interesting idea. Hello, Andrew. Um, but, uh, but, but, but that, and then The Ascent, which is now on the PlayStation, um, which is, is, is very strange. It's like a twin stick uh, style shooter uh, in a, like a 3D 
or a, yeah, in like a 3D space. Um, but it's kind of pulled out, it's almost like a Diablo style game, a very loot oriented, uh, an upgrade oriented game. Um, but the pacing on it is very, very weird. It really wants to like throw you in and get you started. Um, but then it does that weird thing where you're at the start of a game and you keep finding like side quests and even the side quests, when you load them up, they say, yeah, you are not like, you need to be a higher level than this. Um, you know what game I play a lot? Hmm. I played a lot until I reached its completion. Which this is recent. I'm so not a gamer, but I wanted something I could read. I could you know, watch where I went to sleep. Hidden Folks. Oh, yeah. Hidden Folks is great. Yeah. So it came out on Apple, part of Apple Arcade. So I think Apple TV not a lot of games to the Apple TV and Apple Arcade. I'm going to point that out. Like, there's Solitaire. It's like every few months, maybe something comes out. I think, so. like, and the idea with Apple Arcade was when it was only going to be original games, that they would all have Apple TV apps. Like, a lot of them do, and they're not good, but they've got them. Right. But now they're even porting in older games. So even those ones, I'm sure, get ex exempted from that. But yeah, Hidden, Hidden so is great. I bet it would be amazing. How does it work on the Apple TV? controller you just move around and pop and zoom so they got the mechanics down pardon me while i eat everybody <laughs> uh yeah i enjoyed it solitaire the solitaire game they have solitaire stories is really well done like who would think in you know 2022 i'd be excited about a solitaire game but that's good but the uh, the hidden folks as you know it's kind of a where's waldo with a bunch of different elements you have to find so it's got its own just black and white mm -hmm. art, you know illustrations but works. It's great. You get in that world. I'm like, I'm like, if they came out with another version, I'd be like all in. I could see them doing hidden folks with like branded content. Totally cool. It, it very much is like the, the thing about hidden folks that separate it from other like hidden object games, because there's a whole it's a whole genre. There's a mm -hmm. million of them out there um, is that the illustrations are really good. There's a really there's a lot of, of sound design that goes into the game. Yeah. Uh, all human done voices like <laughs> yeah and and the other thing is like those levels are big like the first couple of levels they give you are kind of small but eventually you get you're working on some big maps um mm -hmm. and you don't really see that in the other hidden object games it's a lot of like here is here's a messy room find all of the messy room objects and that that stinks like uh, there's a lot of like uh, work that's gone into hidden folks. Although I love lo-fi games like that, though. Sure, though I, it's not even like a lo-fi fidelity thing. It's just they're they're cheaply made, and <laughs> not very generous. What happened? We're talking about uh, Bryce is game shaming me, shaming <laughs> no! me for the games I like. I'm saying oh, the game yeah. I like is good. <laughs> Tiny tower. Hmm. Oh, are we still doing tiny, that? tiny tower still around? Oh, no, no. That was just the, the wow, last time. Another the burn. Another burn. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, 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 sorry. I didn't realize you were the still last time, tiny the, tower. The last time I can remember Andrew going, you know, totally uh, bonkers. Bonkers for a game was Tiny Tower. Tiny Tower whipped. Tiny Tower, Tiny Airport. Tiny Airport was good. I think I played Tiny Airport. Tiny Airport was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, they have a tiny tower of Vegas. <gasps> okay, I need to look away from this. Uh oh. Uh oh. Y'all ready to roll? Uh, I believe so. Are you ready to do some after things, Andrew? And yes. You, you've got to go in. You. Uh, hour, right? Uh, oh, you've got like an, an hour, hour right? Yeah. Okay. Got an hour. Okay. Got an hour. Cool. Alrighty. Well, then I'll count you in for after things. In. Well Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought we were ready. Okay. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. Snap into the flavor. You simply have to snap into it. Mostly, we're we're asking you to snap into it. Did you, did you watch that Guardians of Justice show, Justin? No, I haven't. You might like it. Yeah, probably. Just somebody, I don't. I haven't watched anything. Thank Not God, Batman's going to be on the on the HBO because I, I finally oh, got to watch yeah. it. I've been like, I've had like a two month conversation due with Andrew. Oh. oh, Andrew knows. No, he know. I know. This yeah. is like it. Like, I know he's judging me every time. Every minute I don't see it, he's <laughs> he's judging me. Yeah, he just. See, the difference is you have friends. <laughs> I don't. Oh, jeez. Now here we go. All right. Well, 
with that, <laughs> we'll start smiling. The biggest defense against libel is truth. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. It's time for the. Uh, <laughs> I was here talking to these people with real human act interactions. And then I was over here having real human. Yeah, but did you see the Batman? Did you see the Batman? <laughs> well, I was out in the world being a human around a other very, people, with our own jokes, our own alive. culture, our own things, <laughs> instead of just siphoning off of this 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 pre-manufactured zeitgeist to which I don't contribute to. So, uh, no, I didn't see your silly comic book movie, you silly, no, silly man. No, I want to see the stupid... All right, we'll start some after things in three, two. Hello, and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin and Robert Young. Yo. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Yo. So, gentlemen, I want to talk about career paths, trajectories. Mm. Oh, and sure. future you versus present you. Okay. What are you doing right now for future you? Mm. I can start. Yeah, go for it, Justin. I've always wrestled with this uh, uh, question because I've never really known what my clear path was in life. Uh, uh, I've always known, I've always kind of had a project, um, but I remember, uh, uh, you know, vividly in my in my twenties, uh, you know, being involved in really really cool stuff. A lot of it with Andrew. Where people would be like, "Oh, well, what's what's the what's the Justin project? What's 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 mm. the Justin path?" And I'm like, "Oh, I have no idea." Like, I guess I, I didn't really have that have that vision. But I will say now that um, you know, for me, Dog and Pony Show Audio, the idea of starting a production company and creating enough product that gets people uh, uh, excited and 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 establishing a little bit of a brand um that that is what i want to continue to build on as a uh uh a, a safeguard for the future you know it's something that i can build i can employ people i can uh, uh, use it to create my own stuff i can create stuff for other people uh and then theoretically have that be a gateway uh you know to either sell or merge with uh, another larger entity uh that can trust in me and my team to continue to build really cool stuff but i, I think that that uh, uh owning the means of production is a very uh a good way to continue to be able to create things that you like mm -hmm. um i i I think in, uh, to the question, what am I doing now to the benefit of future me? Um, you know, one of the things, it's more behind the scenes thing, I guess, but that's what the show is. Um, uh, you know, behind the scenes, we've got other editors, other crew who work on some of the other shows and stuff. And so, um, you know, uh, for the past, I don't know, year or so, I've kind of been We've we've uh, Heather Tate, who is one of our rem our remote editors. She's been doing a lot of the. It was great to meet her, by the way. She was fantastic. She was here for Founders Week. Yeah, um, and uh, so she she ends up doing a lot of the the editing for Scam Nation nowadays, um, which you know has historically been me your job, me and Brant, me and uh, Jeff back in the day. Um, uh, uh, Zach did a few, um, and so. It, that I think I may have even talked about on this program before, but it's 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 a little strange being in a supervisory role to somebody. Um, uh, but in that, you know, in a, in a very kind of objective way, that's that is, is management experience, um, and and like just working with other people. Like one of the very weird things about the 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 video genre medium that we're in versus say tv or film even um is that it's very it's very one person project uh yeah you know we, it takes a couple of people to shoot say something like scam nation but one person finishes the video and get gets it done it's not a whole thing it is not a big you know overview process and so i'm still kind of getting used to that and getting 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 figured out like what seems to work best how do i um, 
know, how do I discipline or try to exert any amount of authority? But, but, um, I think that's like a, a big thing I'm working on right now. Um, and it doesn't materialize in new projects and new podcasts and anything, but I think that that, you know, for probably what it looks like I'm doing in 15 or 20 years, it'll probably be something more like that and a little bit less hand to keyboard time. I, I think that, I mean, that, that's, that's picking up the skills that, you know, later on, like that was one of my weaknesses was, yeah, I never, I would sometimes work with groups like on a TV production or something like that. And sometimes I'd be in a supervisory position, but usually I had a partner or somebody else who was able to do kind of the more of the people management thing. And I would just be more about the project itself or the idea. Uh, and that's a skill to this day that, you know, now I'm in a situation where I've got to kind of work with other groups and sort of manage certain things. Um, more still project side, like I might collaborate with stuff like we did a really great video that I love that we did for at OpenAI and that was just working with a good team of people that knew what they needed to do and, and that was just more collaboration. So I, I think the biggest, you know, again, my biggest weakness one was early on is I never put myself in a position where I had to collaborate a lot mm -hmm. and that's a skill that I had to sort of develop later on in life. And I think I'm still struggling to develop because I'm often, I'm very good at the, if X needs to be done, I'll go off and go do X. If X needs to be done, but I need Y and Z from two other people, that is, that's a thing that I'm learning. That's a thing I'm developing because that that's a thing that's sort of a challenge for me because I work at my own speed. And mm -hmm. also I buy my own sense of priorities. Not to say, oh, everyone else is too slow. It's often just, I might prioritize something at 2 a.m. because it's on my mind. Yeah. So I would say, so for the future version of me is I'm trying to learn some foundational things that maybe aren't important to me now, but I know that my growth are going to be critical. The The best thing I ever did, and I've gone on this over and over again for future me, was just investing, just getting in the habit of putting money away. That is literally, you know, like I sat down to put together, like, what's what do I think my investment strategy is going to be over the next several years and not wait. Because like every time I get a book deal or whatever, I'll get a large chunk of change or whatever. And then it's like, oh, I'll just I'll put that into, you know, a, a, a money market account and then decide what I'm going to go invest. And now I'm like, nah, I'm going to make a more I've done. Very, I've been very lucky, very, very, very lucky by my investments, but they've all been thought through. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to put more thought through. So I have an approach going in the future about what I'm going to do and kind of a strategy there. But. Financially, that's the thing that the best thing I ever did for future me was just try to plan out future me's finances to make sure that future me mm. is going to be, you know, comfortable. Um, I, I still live in a two bedroom apartment, you know, one car and, and there are things where I go, Oh, I'd like to get that. I could afford that. I'd like to do that. I could afford that. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, yeah, but I'm not really, which am I going to like this? Well, having this thing now or having 10 X the value of this five or 10 years down the road, because I kind of have the things that I need right now. And so. That's part of it is like that delayed gratification for certain things is a big part of it. Discipline but, is a hmm. huge thing just in general. I would, I would say that, that, uh, good habits are discipline. Uh, positive habits are, 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 are discipline. And, and, you know, it's, 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 it's easy to say and, and hard to do, but if you have discipline, man, like that's, that's it. Anything what? is possible. But I, yes, yes, and I'll add to that too, though. I, I had this observation is that I ran into somebody who'd worked at Robinhood with their user interface, and I was complimenting Robinhood, the app, for like buying stocks and crypto and all that. And I complimented them on the app. And one of the things I thought that, like, uh, an insight that I had, that I, this is the first time I've ever shared this, was like, if I was going to take something like that to the next step, I would make that when you buy a stock or buy a thing, make it even more visual, even more of a representation, because I've noticed that the way that people might uh, fetishize, oh, I bought this pair of sneakers or this artwork or this other thing or whatever, I feel that way about the stocks that I bought. I yeah. kind of, I get, I get a short-term value out of it of like, oh, I have this thing or I'm part of this thing or whatever. And if that company does well or whatever, it's kind of like owning part of a sports team in a sense. And so there is something to the idea of where, yes, it can be to make, to start doing that, planning that, but it has become the sort of like other... People wake up and they check the sports scores. I wake up to check a portfolio and I go, oh, how did this do? How did this do? That's a fascinating idea of, of, of identity stocks because we certainly saw that over the last 
year, you know, when you had mm-hmm. all, the, all, all the meme stock stuff. But uh, it very much is the case for, I mean, stocks like Tesla and, 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 and stuff like that. Like people are, you know, identified by it. They, 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 it says something about them. Yeah, there, yeah. there is, you, you feel that like, you know, maybe a part of it's like how it's shareholder, but yeah. So I think that's the thing I advise to people is that starting just a little bit, owning one share or two shares and stuff like this, then you'll emotionally, you'll be more involved in following what's going on and you'll care and want to know what's taking place with a particular stock. Mm-hmm. And then other things like I do, I've told this before, I do Udemy courses all the time. I don't always finish them. I just might get enough to, to learn a thing out of there, but that that habit I had that I started six years ago of just taking courses after courses after courses has just opened up so many opportunities to me later on because sometimes it's not like, oh, we don't need a person who knows more than anybody else about this. We just need somebody who knows this and this other thing. Yeah. If you have those two skills, then mm-hmm. all of a sudden, that was, you know, Scott Adams, who uh, can sometimes say, I think, some very crazy stuff, but sometimes some very, very smart things talked about skill stacking and how if you stack a bunch of skills together, all of a sudden that becomes really unique. So, mm-hmm. um, and my I- advice to, uh, one way, I'm going to give a piece of advice to everybody. The two things that I've learned, like one is learn to write and even writers don't know how to write. I know people, I've encountered people like, oh, I love to write. And I read like, yeah, you know how to write 2000 words. You know how to fit 100 words into 2,000 words. Yeah. Learn to write succinctly. Learn, and I'm still struggling with this, but learn to write succinctly because when you want to go out in life and do things and communicate your ideas to other people, learning to write is the first step. Next step is also learning how to communicate and speak. But if you can succinctly communicate a complex idea in just a paragraph or two, that is power. That is a tremendous amount of power. And my one tip is before you start to write everything, write the TLDR first. Write the TLDR first, because that'll yeah. remind you what your point is and what you're trying to do. Yeah. Uh, going back to something uh, one of you said uh, a few minutes ago about um, discipline, right? Um, yeah. I, I think for some people, the opposite or the flip side of the discipline coin is confidence. Um, in that I think there are some people who have confidence and need discipline, and I think that there are some people who have discipline but need confidence, if that makes sense. Like, like you, you are you are too good at, at disciplining yourself into a a thing that you need the confidence to break out of it and and do something different. Yeah, if the idea of discipline as advice for someone who is uh, say undisciplined or 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 um, sloppy or what what whatever uh, have you. Yeah, but sorry. There, 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 finish your point. There are plenty of people who have skills who are talented who have the potential to gain skills and gain talents um who don't because they are afraid of uh, afraid of not succeeding they're failed uh, afraid of um consequences of of um uh in uh, punit you know punity like there are people who 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 the only thing stopping them is confidence and and so i think and, and and i don't think you gain or maybe you can, but I don't necessarily know that you have to gain confidence through discipline as well. No, I mean, I think, well, confidence is, is a whole different thing, which is, uh, uh, man, I, 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 it is certainly a trait of its era. You know, you, you see, you know, videos and stuff online of like, like how to gain five perfect ways <laughs> that you gain confidence of a Sigma male or something like that. Yeah. Uh, when I say discipline, what 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 I mean is just uh, setting goals and being, you know, religious about how you get there. You know, th- there is a lot of equivocation that comes with being an intelligent person. Um, you know, I I I think uh, of some people that I've known that I would uh, that are amazing humans, but I would not consider to be the greatest pattern recognizing brains on the planet uh, uh, often are just like, oh, uh, I thought you were going to do this. And they're like, no, nope, I stopped. <laughs> like, and that's, mm-hmm. that's that. When I ask a smart person why they didn't do the thing that they had set out themselves, holy crap, do I get a gigantic book of reasons. Mm-hmm. Like I, I get, I get every reason on the planet, cosmic and micro. Uh, uh, there's, there's a million <laughs> different 
uh, 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 reasons upon reasons upon reasons upon reasons. The numbers are in front of Andrew's of face, figuring out who. Look, I'm just saying. I, I've I've done it. I've done it too. And and you know, it's 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 you know, why isn't everybody making the money that they want to make? Why isn't everybody in in in, in the shape they want to be in? And and a lot of it is like discipline at the end. I mean, there's a million reasons that go into what happens before that. But if you genuinely are like, I want to do this, the, the difference between Andrew being somebody who understands code and where he is now is his discipline to sit down and 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 go through all these uh, Udemy courses and 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 do have the discipline to 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 go through it and, and I, do the work. Yeah, I. I had, and a hundred percent what you said, it's almost like you had a case study in front of you to observe all this from, which you know we'll find out who that was. But excuses, the more creative you are, the more creative you are at your excuses, and the more good you are convincing yourself this is a good reason to not do a thing. And I it took me it took me a good decade to realize, oh, the enemy is once it gets hard, I just invent a reason why I should give up and do something else. And that's when I made the realization I need to pick a task and never give up. The first one was getting on TV was like, I am going to pick this and never give up until I'll, I'll give myself 10 years, 10 years to try to do this. If for other, no other reason, if I want to do anything in life, I got to be able to follow something through. So that was a big, big, big thing for me. And then I put, applied that to books where I'm like, if I start a book, I'm going to finish the book. It doesn't matter if the book is going to suck. And I realize, oh, this, I will finish that thing because I don't want to train myself to be somebody who leaves things incomplete. And I get in arguments of friends or creators like, yeah, but I'm like, like, listen, the, there will be more books. There'll be more dreams. There'll be more projects, more ambitions. But if you've never forced yourself, and I, I talked to a friend the other day who I think is a highly clever, creative person. And he is a very, he is a person I think regrets very much in his life that he never followed something all the way through. And he would still defend like, why well, I couldn't do this because of this, couldn't do this. It's like, like, dude, like while you were justifying that, there were people flipping, you know, creating and flipping and selling companies, entire empires multiple times. They followed it through to its extension while the other person's justifying it. And so for me, that was a big thing was to realize like this. And also like I had to, uh, two things to say. One is, I got to a point where I knew some very smart people who were very, very accomplished. And I remember at that time, I'm like, oh, yeah, I've decided to learn to code because I'd like to do this. And I'm told like, oh, no, you don't need to do that. Hire somebody else who does that. You don't need to do this. And I'm like, ah, maybe that's the smart way to do the way the way they, to where they got to where they were. That would probably be the right approach. But I'm like, I I need to understand this. I really want to, I don't want to be in a world of trying to build things I don't understand or do things I don't understand at some level. And I, so I have to follow that. And to me, the idea of me saying, I'm going to go learn X and somebody's saying you don't need to, well, what's the worst case scenario? I learn it and I don't need it versus yeah. failing and never having known it. So that was one of the smartest decisions I ever made. And that actually worked out for me wonderfully for you know, multiple reasons. The other thing I'm going to say, and this is going to be harsh, and this is something that really was sort of expressed to me a while ago, was uh, uh, you know, if, if I was told this, like, if you're so smart, why aren't you, like, rich and doing the thing you love? And that was, it was this, okay, if I think I know how the world works, and I think I'm smarter than everybody else, then maybe I should have solved for that problem. Why couldn't I solve? And that hurt because I was like a smart person. Having that somebody say that was just like, but, and then I'm like, oh, maybe I don't know as much about how the world works. Maybe I don't know as much about how things do because I know dumb people are able to do that. And I know people, you know, other people do it. And it can't always be luck. And that's a factor. And I think that's a hard, that's a hard pill to swallow. And I think some people hearing me say this, it's not fun. Uh, it and ain't, it ain't. Uh, uh, and, and man, uh, uh, if, if, if you could assign a weight to it, the amount of times that Andrew and I sat at an Arby's in, in South Florida and solved every movie franchise, every script, every, every and, little and, thing on, on, on the planet. And, 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 you know, there's, there's a, there's a Kanye line, uh, cause there is for everything. Wow. Uh, I don't take advice from people less successful than me. And well, it's, and, 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 and it's stuck with me because it's like, if you can do it, then do it. Do it. 
And let's clarify, if you're a school teacher in Iowa or, you know, working with a group of students and you enjoy this and you've got your retirement put away and you, you're not worried about your financial future and you enjoy going to work and doing that, that's fine. You've won. You've won more sure. than any billionaire, just about anybody else in life. Let me make that very clear. If you are in a job that you love and your financial security is secure enough that you're not panicking about these things, that is ad rule. And that is winning. That is winning. Now I'm talking more to like the the creative types like I want to take over the world or like so-and-so is an idiot. And I'm yeah, like, on know Twitter, it all. Like, know it all. Yeah. Cause we're know it all. And take it from us. Yeah. We are, we are class a weapons grade. <laughs> know it alls who believe that, that, that we can solve for all these things that these dumb idiots are doing in, in various different places in art and politics. Like Andrew and I have had conversations about all of them, how to solve it easy, Facts. We've dotted all of our I's and crossed all of our T's. And I think both of us at, at various points have to do the gut check of like, hey, look, if if we're if, if we can really see the code in the matrix, Neo, then then why aren't we flying? Why don't we know Kung Fu? And and, you know, if if you're if you're working at something and you don't know why you're not as successful as other people, which a it's don't it's not good to compare yourself just to other people, especially. But um like, I, I, you should consider the element that there is something that you don't know about or something that you're not taking into consideration that other people have. Um, whether that's fundamental, major, uh, world-shattering uh, criticism of your idea. Maybe you have a bad idea. Maybe you've got something nobody wants. Maybe you've got something that people can get better, quicker, faster, freer, something. Um, but if, if, if you're running up against failure and, and it's, you know, you're doing something other people are doing, you should consider maybe there's something outside of your paradigm that you are not realizing has influence let, over let, what let you're me, doing. Let, let me just say this to, to dovetail on that. I don't think you get any actionable lessons until you complete a thing. Yeah. I think that, that all, everything that you know up until then is is a, a blurry half developed polaroid photo and it it might be james a garfield it might be your grandma you don't know until you get to the end until you finish something and that about creative projects i believe a billion percent i mean like that might be the case in business but i ain't been in a whole lot of businesses but i've been in plenty of creative situations for which like the, the thing halfway through that you're like, oh my God, I realized halfway through that bleep, blop, bloop, mm -hmm. get to the end. And even if what you're saying, Bryce, like, oh, you, you do a thing and nobody wants it. God, is that a buffet of lessons? It is so many lessons. Like, it, it, like it's you have going to, be, to make you so much better mm -hmm. immediately if you actually listen to it. But you, you have to be open to that perspective. Oh, boy, do you? You have to be open oh to the boy, idea do that you. you might be wrong. Your idea and your decisions mm -hmm. may not have been the best, mm -hmm. most efficient, most effective, whatever. Uh, I, you need to swallow the pill. You need to learn the words a no, no blame, no, no blame debrief and uh, and and the, go from there. The, there's a lesson too, because also like um, watching the little uh, the brouhaha over Elon Musk and Twitter, mm -hmm. and 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 Elon. By the way, is, pay the over on that. We didn't bring it up once this episode until <laughs> right now. Yeah, Elon is certainly has a polarizing effect on people, and it is very interesting because it's sort of like I notice certain kinds of people respond to him one way. Some people are just indifferent. Other people have another reaction, and and you know this is a guy that it's it's funny. Because you're like, you have, hey, what are the stories of the week? Like, ah, him buying Twitter, Elon cost story. Also, Ukraine. Oh, yeah, you know, he's shipping thousands of terminals to the Ukraine to do this. And he's somehow in that story. And then you get the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial, you know, and you're like, ah, and here comes Elon Musk. From You're like, man, this guy just somehow, you know, got a force comes calendar. his way. Yeah. yeah, he just manages to get into every sort of thing. And so... The thing that I saw that I was thought was interesting is that there are people that categorize kind of every successful person into one thing and generally like, well, they were lucky. They were lucky. And I believe there are probably a number of billionaires, people like this, that get had luck. Luck was a big part of it. But there are some people I think like, yeah, luck probably paid a part, but they're these serial successful people. They're people that just continuously successful. 
Warren Buffett was really good at picking stocks over and over again. There was a time when people in the market said, ah, he's a Six Sigma. He's a statistical outlier because he threw into question the way everybody else did stuff because average mutual fund would perform worse than the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And you're trying to pitch a mutual fund and people are like, why don't I buy Berkshire Hathaway? And like, you had to have this narrative for why uh, he wasn't good at what he did because it made everybody else look bad. It made yeah. you look, if you were a professional investor, Warren Buffett made you look really bad when you wanted to sort of say there's no sure thing. And there isn't. But anyhow, I like paying attention to people who are either one, somebody who's stuck with a company for 20 or 30 years and has been instrumental in every sort of decision, like Jeff Bezos with Amazon, or people who have created multiple things. And that's the thing about, like, Musk is like, I, I, I get, you know, I get, he's a, he is a very, he is an out there personality. So I can get why people who have a problem with that, whatever. I, I, I totally understand that. But when it comes to his success... There's so much to be studied there. And the same with Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs and Elon Musk were both serial entrepreneurs. Steve Jobs created, you know, of the three companies he created, um, all exist in one form today. Apple, Pixar, and then Next, both the case of Pixar and Next, they ended up becoming part of bigger companies and their culture helped influence the larger company. Yeah. The mm -hmm. people running Apple today are people who run an Apple in its most successful period of time were Next people so I'm saying this guy learned and knew something. Another person I'll throw out there is uh, Louise Von Ahn, okay? And you go, like, who's he? You know, like, he's a name that's not as, doesn't get as much attention as other people, but he created Duolingo, which is the most popular language learning app on the planet, right? So he created Duolingo. Before he did that, he created ReCAPTCHA. And before that, he helped create CAPTCHA. He created CAPTCHA, which was just, hey, how do we help solve the problem of bots trying to log on to web pages and stuff. And then he realized one day he's like, man, like we're spending like 500,000 hours a day or whatever of people solving these things. What if we use that to solve problems? And so then reCAPTCHA became a thing for, he created a platform where that's how people were transcribing the New York Times, the mm -hmm. New York Times archives, where they would grab smidgens of text from there, have, show the same text to multiple people, and if they agreed, that became that. And so that's how they converted the micro, you know, the microfilm of the New York Times Damn. into text form. Mm -hmm. And he was getting paid like forty-seven thousand dollars for every year of their text that it, which brilliant. And then he goes creates Duolingo, which is a multi-billion-dollar company, and he's a MacArthur Fellow. All this, so there are people out there that really that, that are worth studying to say like why their brains work differently. You know, uh, Von Ant is from Guatemala. You know, he actually got picked, like, you know, like interviewed when he was 18 by Duke because they were looking for international students. And they met with him and said, you should really come to America, go study at Duke. His parents were wise enough to have him learn English when he was young. He pointed out the fact that in Guatemala that, like, if you learn English, he says, just learning English alone, you'll make twice as much as anybody else. And so you watch this guy and he makes these analysis and observations. So I'm like, study people it, who reality keeps seem to work out in their favor. Do, do you have a... A profile or a book that somebody, if someone was interested in the Duolingo guy, that did you just like, is was there, had you read a story on him, or a book, a Wikipedia page? Like, if someone wanted to study this person, uh, uh, how did, how would they get to the level of knowledge that you I collect shared? these stories, Bryce. I collect uh -huh. these stories. So, um, I, he I listens could, on I, the wind. <laughs> yeah. I could, I could probably spend hours going into like these sorts of things because they're fascinating. But, uh, sure, do, I'm, you, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say do a Google search for like a biography or like look up his name on like YouTube. Like do look at a YouTube because I'm sure there'll be a business profile because he's a story that I've heard a couple of times that you go, oh, okay, this is a it resonates with me because I probably heard it on a podcast here or somebody else. So, uh, so it's it's uh, look up like just do a Google search or do in Wikipedia for Louis Van On and or do, for Duolingo and you get his name and you can click through there and probably just do a search on YouTube and that's I. That's my habit at night, by the way, now, is, like, I spend half an hour to hour just watching educational content on YouTube. YouTube docs. Yeah, I just start going through, digging through stuff, biographies on people, all sorts of stuff, breakdowns, whatever, and just, and, and watch a bunch of them on a topic, and, mm. uh, you know, start to follow through. But, yeah, he's just this, in the company itself, Duolingo's a very fascinating company, and he's, he's one of these people you listen to talk, because he was... He taught, you know, he uh, taught graph theory and, and it's just a very smart guy. And sometimes we talk to smart people who sort of feel like the world is stacked against them. They're like, oh, the world doesn't recognize Gene. Like, no, it actually, if you're smart and you're an entrepreneur, it, that's who's killing it right now. Yeah. You know, the guys that were in chess club and 
you know, the, the women who were, you know, studying the sciences and stuff. Hmm. Hmm. Didn't mean to derail that whole thing there. Yeah. But, um, I think we I think we've learned a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so now everybody, uh, you're all better. Yep. We so yeah. uh, <laughs> solved uh, we solved your problems. That's right. <laughs> uh both cosmetic and uh deeply in your soul. Yeah. And uh Voila, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, build, build like my of my many, many problems. Part of it was I keep I kept wanting to have the bigger idea, the better idea. And 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 I realized that several years into that, like, man, even if I did a small thing, that's better than nothing. Finishing oh, a thing, God, whether it was. Yeah. yeah and for me, it was like even if it was making making the world's worst feature length movie. I still made a feature length movie. And even if it was writing the worst novel still wrote a novel mm-hmm. and you know if i wrote a pro- computer program well i still wrote a computer program and if i'm able to learn and that's that feedback that like who who succeeds what businesses or people succeed the ones that get more data about what works and what doesn't you pointed out justin about like how if you don't put something out there you will never know oh god i mean it's it's <sighs> you know the, the first step is courage to do it uh, the second step is the discipline to get to the end of it. And the third step is the wisdom to understand what was good and what was bad about it. Like, and, and if, and if you can develop those three things, boy, do is, is, is the world way simpler. That's the other thing I think. All right. My final thought on this. If you don't finish and release things, and I'm specifically talking about creative stuff now, if you don't finish and release things, then you literally will be paralyzed by the ifs and buts because they will be hypotheticals to you. If I were better at this, but it was this thing. Uh, When you put stuff out, you at least know, okay, uh, there's a lot of work I need to do in terms of this, that, you know, or, or you start to listen to like, uh, uh, other things that are contemporary. To be totally honest, like there was the last five years, really for me, have been listening to high end podcasts, podcasts that are put out by the biggest people that they're that that can employ a lot of people, uh, and trying to make my stuff from the writing to the recording to how it sounds sound either indistinguishable from or in my opinion better than and that's where really it's like in your head when you're starting out you think like no no no, my style the thing that i figured out that's the secret like i'm just gonna roll out this brilliant idea that my gigantic throne brain came up with uh and then you realize oh my god there are miles in craft miles and miles and miles away before i'm close to the craft that I, that I need to be at. And once you can get there craft wise, that's where all those ideas, that's where your personal style can separate you from other people. And, and, uh, uh, but you got, I, that's, that's, you got to walk that path, man. You got to, there's no shortcut. Me, it used to drive me nuts. Cause I'd ask my dad and be like, what do you, what do you think about this idea? And my dad would be like, ideas are cheap. Ideas are cheap. Ideas are cheap. And, and it always, I'm like, no, but this is a good idea. And it's like, you do then eventually you reach a point where you have a good idea every day and that you look at a thing and you, you read, you know, a technology section like, oh, this company's doing this. And you're like, oh, yeah, you know, that's that's, you know, I was looking at that problem. And that looked like a great solution because you realize that's not the hard part isn't finding a problem or even coming up with a way to make a solution you know, for a solution for it. It's making it it's making yeah. it work and putting that together. And why do serial entrepreneurs some of them succeed? It's because they it's not just that they they're. It's not just, oh, I have a good idea. And people, that hurts people to think because they think all I need is that idea. If I had thought of Google and, you know, I've had friends like, ah, I have this billion dollar idea. And I'm like, cool. Um, You know, like even great ideas fail and you got to build the thing. And and that's that that weird kind of confidence. I just found a clip, too, which is uh, Louise Von Ahn. Uh, 11 years ago was at TED and he talked about CAPTCHA and he talked about reCAPTCHA and he talked about his brand new project, which was going to translate the web into other languages where people could do this and, and learn languages for free, which was Duolingo. And this is where he first said, hey, if you want to sign up for this. Wow. So 10 years later. Yeah. 
yeah, 10 years later, billion, billion, multi-billion dollar company. And he told everybody what he was going to do. And think about this. People get very precious about their idea. Like, oh, I don't want somebody to take this idea. One, the people capable of running to that idea are out there worrying about their own stuff. Yeah. They're already trying to do their own things. You might be in a point where you get really far along and you show progress and somebody says, I'll do this. You know, or somebody's so directionally into a thing, you might say something. But for the most part, it's like, I, I get people, I want to tell you this idea I have for an app. And can I get you to sign an NDA? And I'm like, one, I'm not, this is me personally speaking. I'm like, I don't have the time to help with this. And two, if you've not a developer, not even done anything, I guarantee you, you're going to tell me this thing. And I'm going to show you five things just like it that already exist. Yeah. Because nobody wanted to go, they don't want to know that it's been tried because they think the idea is what's special. But Think about this. Ten years ago, this guy got up in front of a TED audience on a video that now has had, uh, this one's had 300,000 views, but when it was showed on TED back then, it was probably aired, all whatever, streamed live, etc. Millions of people were told about this thing that he was going to do. This is how I'm going to do it. This is how I'm going to make it work. And ten years later, he's the one that did it. People could have tried to take it, could have tried to steal it, do it, whatever. Maybe other people did. But to make it work, you had to be a guy like him. My pick is Duolingo. <laughs> yeah. Duolingo is good. It's a good. Uh, I need to get back on it. I I I, for, I fell off. I was I was learning Spanish. I went, uh, you you uh, fell off the Spanish trip. Well, I was grumbling in Spanish. So. Oh, I see. I see. Oh. Uh, no, yeah. I I don't know. I wanted I wanted to I wanted to learn Spanish. I really just only want to learn Spanish in the way that all the Spanish speakers in Miami do, which is like every fourth word. Mm. Every it's like. People in Miami Spanglish. know Spanish in the same way that the hype man at a rap concert knows all the lyrics. <laughs> yeah. It's like just kind of every fourth word. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, um, gosh, I don't know if I have a pick that is on topic for today. But, um, uh, skip. My pick is skip. Skipping it. I'm skipping it. My pick is actually a quote um, that came from like doing a deep dive into some other stuff by, by Charlie Munger. Raise your hand if you know who Charlie Munger is. I've heard the Sounds name. Sounds familiar. Yeah. So any, if everybody's heard the name, and I'll go this, and I'll say it, and you'll go, oh, yeah, of course, Charlie Munger. When we say Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett, what we really mean is Warren Buffett and his partner, mm, Charlie Munger. There we They're go. the two people that run... Berkshire Hathaway, Berkshire right? Berkshire Hathaway. Guys, yep, and Charlie Munger is uh, probably 100 years old right now. Uh, Charlie Munger is 98 years old. 98 years old, okay? And he is a very... Ready to run for they, president. <laughs> yep. They When Charlie and Warren talk, it's very interesting because they kind of... They, they politically... Warren's like the Democrat. Charlie's the Republican. But they're the back and forth and kind of the, the yin and their sort of yang which is a very, I think it was a great strategy is to say, what are you, what do you, how do you see things that I don't see? What's your approach that I don't, whatever. But uh, this is a thing we've talked about. We've danced around for years about this, but uh, he, he quote from Charlie Munger. I never allow myself to hold an opinion on anything that I don't know the other side's argument better than they do. Yep. Mm. Yep. Which is powerful. You think about like, I think about how many things I have opinions on and I, I look at how many times I told people like, oh, well, this, this, this. And I'm like, do I know that? Yeah. Do I really know that? I know the smart people I agree with say that, but I don't know this. And if I was challenged and had to debate this, I might not be able to. It's why I, I forced myself to go see Michael Moore movies. <laughs> I was like, it, I it knew is, I was going to back. This is back in the day when they actually mattered, but like, mm, yeah. uh, 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 I knew I was going to get into arguments about him. And so I was like, I, I, just, I have to see it yeah. because if I don't yeah. see it, it'd be like, well, did you know that every, every child gets shot every day? And I was like, I don't <laughs> wow. think that even is statistically possible. <laughs> it was in the movie though. Did you see the scene in the movie with the puppets? And I'm like, no, I didn't see the scene of the movie. So I had to go see. It. So I will say, I think it's, it is, it is worth having your own barometer of what is important. <laughs> to, you, we have forgotten to pick our battles. Pick your battles, people. Oh yeah, like, but then, then as of now, I'm in a field where I need to have pedantic. Well, and, and, and Munger's saying if I'm gonna, if I'm, if it's worth me having yes, an opinion exactly. on, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just if yeah. I'm gonna have an opinion Not for on everything, I, yeah, yep. yeah. It, again, he says if I'm going to have an opinion, meaning if I'm gonna enter into an argument or a debate on this, yep, this rather than saying 
Yeah. Don't yeah. be don't be a half cock jack nape. And I I like like I my news sites are like I don't know what you would determine from what I my points of view on the world from looking at my news sites because I like I go oh what did they say yeah. how does this site cover that too because they're often like oh this is it this is what's important to them and they're pulling at this thing I'm like oh okay like that's that's my default like I don't have like this my, well, I'm gonna go to this one person to tell me how to think my prominent news sites are a 404 page and the hamster dance yeah. <laughs> great 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 website. it's been after- <laughs> all righty hey everybody that's gonna do it here for the stream so far thank you so much yeah yeah, for joining us here we're gonna go offline and get ready for cord killers thank you gentlemen thank you andrew thank you brian and justin yep thank you everybody we'll be back in a few hey thank you justin all right later